Hey guys, I hope you're all well. I'm back in the nursery. It's not that you can tell I'm in the nursery, but just feel like this is a really nice little spot. It's good lighting, cosy. And I'm doing a video that I wasn't gonna do because I feel like on my Instagram, I've kind of spoken about this a lot. Um, and I'm quite an open person, so I feel like there's like nothing left to say. But I guess people wanted a more detailed version of my birth story. And also, I feel like I personally was looking at them a lot on in, on YouTube when I was um, going to give birth and pregnant. So I just feel like it's quite useful to know like different outcomes and possibilities and things. Um, just to begin with, to let you know, mine wasn't the most. I mean, it's a pretty quick and straightforward birth, but uh, there might be things that might scare people. I mean, it wasn't a horrible birth, but I just thought I'd let you know because I would, I would want to know before I started watching something if it might be something that might put, like, scare me. I don't think it's gonna scare you, but I just wanted to let you know that, like, it's not exactly like it's all roses. <laughs> That's all I wanted to say, um, so that you can make a decision consciously if you want to watch this or not. So I've got my cup of tea because. It's essential. I've literally just had my first lunch outside um, since everything opened up and I'm in ice school because it's so cold. I was like sat there eating my sandwich like shivering. Um, so yeah, Jack's just taken the baby out so I can actually sit here and focus. I haven't written anything down which is probably a mistake but I'm just going to like go through the day as it happened and try and remember. Um, so the first thing that happened, I literally was on the phone to my sister eating cake, watching Lost in bed um, and then I got up and took the dog out to go for a wee and I had just been for a wee and I, let me just say, I think I had a bladder infection and didn't know um, because every time I weed, I would wee on my hand. I know that's gross, but like, I'd go for a wee and then wipe and I'd wee again on my hand without realising, like, I don't know if that was my water's broken or what, but anyway, I was just like that and all the time, I constantly needed a wee. So, Basically, oh, Penny wants to join in. Come on in. Sorry for that interruption. My mum just called and now the dog wants to join in. The dog, my baby. Keep calling her the dog. No, she's not. She's my firstborn. Um, so basically, yeah, so I'd taken Penny out for a wee. I'd just been for a wee myself. And then I was like, oh, and I was like, I think I just wiped myself. <laughs> and so I, I was like, I don't know if I've wet myself or what, I don't know. Anyway, because you just kind of expect your water's breaking to be like, like a gush, like someone's popped a war balloon or something. Anyway, so I, oh, Penny, seriously? So I went to the toilet and changed my pants and then it happened again. And then I changed my pants again and then it happened again. And then I said to Jack, I think that it might be something else. I don't know. So. Um, if you're pregnant, you get those folders and on the front of it, it's got like an emergency thing to call any time, basically. You call them when you're in labour, but also like, I called them a million times when I was pregnant and since I had the baby, um, it's just like a helpline for any questions that are baby related and um, pregnancy related once you're past 12 weeks. Um, so I rang them and was just like, I'm not really sure like what's going on. I don't know if my waters are broken. Um, I've got no pain, but also if they had, she was like, how long has it been going on for? And I was like, well, I think just this morning, but also like kind of, it's been happening for a while that I've been weeing on my hands. Like, is that, I don't know. Um, so they were like, come in because if it has been going on for a while, like, you know, it could be an issue with infection and stuff. Um, so I went in, uh, didn't have any pain again. Jack's mum took us with all of our bags and stuff just in case. Um, and then Jack wasn't allowed to come in. I just had to come in on myself. Um, and she was just like, by the way, my I was literally like, not pouring, but like a constant stream of water. So I was like, I think it's definitely waters by this point because I like was just soaking through my trousers. So I was literally like, sat in a puddle. Um, and then she was like, yes, it's definitely waters. Um, but do we sample whilst you're here? Uh, and a COVID test, because you're gonna come back later anyway, so you may as well just do a COVID test. Um, so I did that, and then, um, what happened then? She, they took ages, so I was literally like, just sat there like, what's going on? And they monitored the baby too, whilst I was there. Everything was fine. Um, they said my waters are broken, and then they worked out a time to come back. So they were like, come back at six o'clock in the morning tomorrow if, so this is 10 o'clock that my waters broke. So I probably got there about half 12, 12 o'clock. I can't remember the timing. So they were like, come back tomorrow at six o'clock at, no, uh, yeah, six o'clock in the morning if your waters have, um, your, you've not gone into natural labor because we'll need to induce you. So that was that, sent me away. And whilst I was waiting, I'd started to have 
contractions like they just felt like really intense period pains so then um, I'm reading the hypnobirthing book about the science of it there are two different types of contractions which I didn't know so like there's upward contractions which are like your stomach your muscles going like up and then there's downward contractions and dilating and then there's downward contractions which like push go back down and like push the baby out and like honestly your body pushes like it's so weird I can't even describe the only way that I can describe it, the feeling is like when you've got really bad food poisoning and you like cannot control your body pushing the poo out because I literally it's just like that like I honestly think I would have had that baby without pushing or anything like honestly she was coming out so anyway back to the beginning so I, they were like okay you can go blah 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 hope to see you before six o'clock tomorrow morning um, and all of this then I um so then I went home and I was like I'm really hungry and also everyone had said like you know when you first go into labor eat something because you're I don't think they let you you're not allowed to eat when you've got left jaw and they don't I don't know if they like you to eat just in case you have to have an emergency c-section anyway so I was like can we go to McDonald's on the way home and by this time I was starting to have really intense contractions like as soon as we like got in the car I was like and I was really struggling and also I was with Jack's mum and like we get on really well and we're quite close but still I feel like I want I was embarrassed to like yell out and stuff so I was like <laughs> even though she wouldn't have cared but anyway so we went to mcdonald's um and then got home and by the time we got home i'd been timing them because so i got this app which was like three pounds but i really recommend it it's a freya app which is i'll write it down below and it's the app um that the hypnobirthing people do um and it's i, I wasn't into hypnobirthing by the way but i just read the book um not that there's a bad thing about it but i'm just letting you know that like i literally just read breathing techniques and science and then i um went into labor to 10 days early so I wasn't like prepared for it um and then yeah so it's an app I think it's like three pounds but it's really handy because you can press it when you're having a contraction and then stop pressing it when the contraction stops and then it times your contractions and how far between they are so it's quite good to, like you don't have to think about that when you're in pain you just press the button um so I was having three every 10 minutes by the time I got home which is like quite that's normally when they say to go to hospital but i was like i literally just got home um so i rang them again and was like don't know what to do <laughs> like this has happened um and also bearing in mind i don't live i live like a half an hour drive from my hospital so and it was a saturday so i was like could be busy so i was just like don't know what to do and they were like well you need to be having them for at least an hour so make sure um that you're having them for a while and then come it call back um so i did that um i ate my mcdonald's weirdly i was like i need to cut my nails like, i had really long nails and in my mind i was like i can't have long nails and have a baby because i might scratch the baby i don't know why it just was what i thought of so i was like i need to cut my nails and then um so my sister came around and i was COVID and everything but my i was she was jack so sorry i'm so all over the place i should have written this down so jack we were in the middle of doing our bathroom as well and we were like for god's sake really because we've got a leak so jack had to rip the bathroom out and then fix the leak and then redo it um so we were like we're not ready for the baby we had an, an awful week before we had cracks here in the wall damp it in the baby's room we had the ba the bathroom we had a leak the dishwasher broke it was literally like the week from hell and we were like wanted the baby to come early and then we were like okay we don't we need her to wait uh, and then she had other ideas so jack was like i'm just going to quickly run the hoover around the house and then i could hear him drilling in the bathroom and i was like jack you're not going to get the bathroom done like please stop drilling i'm having contractions and so he was like why don't you get Lauren around she's better at these things like she'll help to calm you down and kind of like be there for you so my sister came around and she bought like loads of coke and sweets and like all my favorite snacks and stuff um to like help to calm me and was like making me cups of tea got me a hot water bottle she was just being amazing um so she came around um and i was like carrying this a boot box around because i keep my nail varnishes and stuff in there and she was like talking to me and then she i was like saying all this stuff and she was like you know i just have one question and i was like what and she was like <laughs> what are the Ugg boots for and I was like they're not Ugg boots they're my it's my nail stuff but either, even so like she was like what and I was like I just need to cut my nails so I was like I have contractions and being like <laughs> and then like fi filing my nails honestly I don't know what came over me like seriously I just need to cut my nails but I just had it in my mind that I had to cut my nails you probably can't hear me right now because I'm like 
talking really fast and going high pitched. But anyway, so I like cut my nails. Um, I'm just gonna have a sip of tea and calm down. <laughs> oh, I'm very tired and hyper. After like my sister was out, I literally soaked through so many clothes. Like I was assumed that your water's fake and then that's it. But mine were like a trickle constantly. Um, and then my sister got Monopoly out because she was like, you love playing Monopoly today. He's like, guilty, love a board game. Um, but she got it all set out and she was like, do you want to play Monopoly? And then I was like, I really don't want to play Monopoly like I'm in labour. Um, she was like, oh well, we distracted you while I put it out. Um, and then she was like taking photos and videoing me. I haven't actually seen that video. I'll have to watch it and see if it's like worth putting in here. So then after that, it was like basically time to go back to the hospital. So her friend Jack's mum, she was literally on standby. So the reason why Jack's mum went is because Jack doesn't drive. Um, he ha was meant to have his driving test, but because of COVID and everything, it's literally been delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed. So he unfortunately hadn't passed his test in time for to drive me to hospital. I was not going to drive myself to hospital when I was in labour. Like, I don't think that's safe. I don't know if that's even legal. So. Jack's mum took us and then um, trying to think what happened. Yeah, so I had to be checked out. So Jack wasn't allowed to come while I was checked out. So him and his mum waited in the waiting room because we didn't know if I was going to have to go home again. They, I literally, it was like nearly an hour before they took me into a room and I was just like, come on. Like, I was having contractions. I was just sat in the waiting room on my own ha with a mask on having contractions. It was like the worst thing ever. And there was like people there for appointments too. And I was just like really embarrassed trying to like control myself and like breathe through these contractions. But I was just like, couldn't make eye contact with them because I just felt embarrassed. I don't know why, but I just felt really embarrassed. Like I'm someone who gets embarrassed easily. How many times can I say embarrassed? Um, and then I, so they took me in I had to ask twice, like, hello, like, have you registered me? Like, is someone coming? And then I was, like, in so much pain, and they were like, do you want me to check you out first to see how dilated you are? Or do you want me to um, give you some pain relief? And I was like, both. <laughs> um, but so they, in the end, I was like, I just want you to check me out, because then Jack can come. So I was like, just check me out first. Um, so they checked me, and they were like, oh, there's uh, a little bit of blood. Um, and literally... I looked and was like, this is like after they checked me out. I keep being like that, after they checked me out. They checked me out and then they were like, oh, there's a little bit of blood. I'm gonna take this away. And I was like, it was bright red. And I was like, oh my God. And that's one thing Jack said. He was like, I was surprised how much blood you lost like continually throughout. And I was like, it probably looked like more because it was like mixed in with the waters. But yeah, we were both quite shocked like that how much blood. Cause I just didn't think, I knew there'd be blood when I had the baby, but I didn't think like before in the waters and stuff. I don't know, maybe it was something to be concerned about, but no one said anything to me, so maybe they were just trying not to worry me. I don't know if that's normal or not. Maybe you guys can comment below if you've had a baby and or you're a midwife or something and it's normal, I don't know. Um, so, and check me out. I had to have two women check me out because the first woman was like, my fingers aren't long enough. I was like, great. Um, and then the second woman was like, okay. So basically she was like, I can feel the baby's head because you're, so she was like, you're only one or two centimeters dilated. I'm not a scientist or a midwife or anything, so I have no idea if I'm what I'm saying is correct. But she said, You're not, you're only like, you're not dilated much. She said, But your cervix has thinned. So I think it's your cervix, it's like a tube that like is like that and thick and it like thins and opens so the baby can come out. Um, and that had happened, and she could feel the baby's head, but the um, I wasn't dilated. Of whatever that is so basically it was just like she's in the worst position she's also back to back so I was just like that's great because apparently back to back is really painful so they gave me something called oromorphine and they said I could get Jack to come they were like you're probably gonna stay in this room now because you're being induced at six and then they got me the oromorphine so this is at like half four and they got me the oromorphine um, which is like liquid morphine apparently um, but since I've been told, like, that's not something you give someone who's in labour, apparently. I don't know. But the other midwife was like, that is not a labour drug. <laughs> like, what the hell? But anyway, it didn't do anything. Um, and then Jack came up, and then we were talking and blah, 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 blah. And then they were like, oh, 
six o'clock in the morning they thought i'd been induced at six o'clock at night that's why like they were like you're gonna stay here so they put me on the ward and jack was allowed to come in the ward until eight o'clock at night he just had to leave then because that's when the visiting time for the ward is over and apparently that's not a covid thing that's just in general every hospital is different but our hospital had visiting times between eight in the morning and eight at night and and that was on the ward so if you weren't in active labor you're just on the ward um whether you've had your baby or you're in labor um no partners were allowed to stay so i was a bit like but i know other people whose hospitals are like 24 hours so that's just my hospital and then um so i was having really bad contractions like i was in so much pain so often and i kept saying like can i have some more pain relief 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 and they kept being like yeah 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 i'll be back in a minute and never coming back and then it got to eight o'clock at night so bear in mind there's a long time um and literally i was freaking out because jack was gonna have to go so like he was like let me take a picture of myself let me put your favorite food out let me put a program on your phone and i was just like no you're not going i was freaking out also i was like screaming so like basically sorry i know how haphazard this is i because she was back to back and where she was i was having the contractions that make you push from like two centimeters dilated because it was just like she was so low down and her back it was back to back so i was like my body was like telling me to push they were like don't push because you can't push her out so you just do yourself damage but they were like I, I like couldn't i was trying not to but i was and i jack said i was like so the noises i was making he was like, i've never heard a human make them before and i was sometimes i was trying to do the hypnobirthing breathing techniques and i'd like breathe through them and that was really good really helped control the pain and also you have no pain in between contractions like no one ever told me that before so i was like focusing on the pain in between contractions only a minute and a half so i was just like focusing on that um but then sometimes i would just scream and let it go and then it would just like take over my whole body and the rest of the ward was like quiet it was like dim lights it was night time people watching telly and like quietly whispering to each other and i was like ah! and then i could hear someone laughing and i was like they are laughing at me and jack was like they're not calm down like they're just laughing at the tv and i was literally like oh my god um so yeah i was like a nightmare i feel so sorry for jack and then um they checked me out at eight o'clock they came and i was like can someone just check me please and they were like if i check you like i might have to check you again though like do you want me to do that like you don't want to be checked too many times and i was like just check me um, and then they checked me at eight o'clock and i was four centimeters dilated thank goodness so jack could stay and they took us to a delivery suite so we were like ready to go basically like in active labor so um from i i was admitted to hospital at 4 30 and then i went into active labor at four eight so that's like four hours um and then so at eight o'clock literally got there and she i was like i want epidural and i want epidural now so she got everything ready but we were waiting for the anaesthetist and then the anaesthetist had to go into surgery so she was like let me just come in and talk to you all about the epidural uh and then so you know about it and then when someone else is free they'll come and give it to you and i was literally like i've read everything about it like i know everything about it in the time that you're talking to me about it you could have bloody well given me the thing um so anyway she did that and that really annoyed me and then went off and then um also the, the midwife was like if you had any pain relief and i was like i've had oral morphine and she was like that is not something you give someone who's in active labor um and i was like well that's great and then i was like can i have pethidin um and then she was like no it's too far gone because apparently if you have pestin at a certain point then it can get into the baby's bloodstream or something like it's just not good so basically i couldn't do that and then um the epidural so then the other anesthetist came um and she gave me the epidural and it didn't work <laughs> so i had to wait ages for it which so i was in loads of pain then and then the epidural just did not work like my legs went numb and that is it i could feel everything and my midwife was in complete denial that i could feel everything literally let me just have some more tea she was like you're not in pain you've had your epidural it's worked and i was like i can feel everything and they gave me this click to like get more of the epidural and i was like <laughs> 
<laughs> and in the end they were like let's just take that away from you um and honestly my midwife was awful like i'm really sorry if like this is scary to people because all the other midwives that i spoke to afterwards were so lovely like all the people who looked after me on the ward and stuff but the midwife that i had was just not nice to be honest she just kind of i don't know if she's ill or what but she just kind of sat there in the corner in silence like she didn't do anything and like at one point so i was i literally didn't go to the toilet the whole time i was in hospital every time i had a contraction i just sweat myself and i honestly did not care at all that i was just weeing all over the place like literally had no shame um and at one point she was like shall i just catheterize you so that like you don't wee everywhere um and i was like ow like that really hurts and she was like you can't feel it you've had an epidural and i was like if i had an epidural i wouldn't be able to feel a catheter going in like let alone these contractions that i'm shouting about <laughs> um and every time i had a contraction as well i apologized to her because she made me feel so uncomfortable and like, i'm so mad at myself that i didn't complain about her and get someone else and instead i was just complaining i was apologizing to her when i was screaming in pain like is that so british of me i just can't even deal um and then so basically that's how it went on for a while and um i was just in so much pain basically and jack bless him was a godsend because the woman was just not helping at all so he had my water bottle which i had in my hospital bag um and i got full giving birth and it was so good honestly jack just kept refilling that for me and it was so easy because i could drink it from any angle um and he was like feeding it to me um so i drank so much water honestly like i literally drank gallons while i was giving birth because it was just like the only thing it's like something to do and it's like distracting me because by this point like i can't have gas and air i forgot to mention because i have a form of lung disease so literally i couldn't have pethogen I couldn't have my epidural didn't work and I couldn't have gas and air so at that point it was like okay we're doing this au naturel um and then he also had a handheld fan on my face and this stuff from the expert midwife called spritz to uplift which is like a cooling uplifting spray and obviously like you can get them from anywhere but I really recommend those three things because they got me through labor with no pain relief like I think mind over matter in my head i was waiting for the epidural to kick in so i feel like that kind of got me through too because i kept thinking like it's gonna kick in in a minute it's gonna kick in in a minute it's gonna kick in in a minute and it didn't um so yeah basically then she was just being uh b-i-t-c-h to be honest and so jack actually had a go at her like i didn't know because he didn't say anything in front of me I don't, I don't think i was pretty out of it um but he told me afterwards that he said to her outside like look you just she's clearly in a lot of pain and you everyone who came in jack said was saying how distressed i was like i now am like i don't think it was that bad and he's like are you kidding he said that he went to a toilet at one point and was like i can't do this anymore i was like you can't do it anymore um so he said to her like she's clearly really distressed like all you're doing is saying she's not in pain like is there anything you can do like this can't keep going on like this um and she was like i can try and break and push so that she's ready to push like she could like force it kind of herself and he was like yeah just do that like because she needs do you know what i mean so she was like i'm just gonna to me i didn't know that had gone on so she was like, i'm just gonna inspect you again she had to hand up like forceful pain and i was like oh. and then she was like okay you're ready to push now and i was like oh my god in my head two things i was like finally this is going to be over and also i was like oh my god the epidural hasn't kicked in yet and i'm gonna have to push this thing out with no pain relief um but actually i i mean jack said it, i was screaming but i don't remember it being that painful like, i feel like the contractions were worse than pushing because when i push i could actually use the contractions like it's the weirdest feeling that your body is pushing and like trying she kept telling me off for pushing like at one point she was literally just sat there like this and i was like Ugh! and she was like you're giving yourself hemorrhoids i was like you are just a delight thank you so much um because i just couldn't stop pushing but obviously there was no way to push so like yeah i had like the worst piles but i will let you know they go like i did not know that about piles i thought like if you got them you're stuck with them for life but they go so if anyone else has just given birth and they've got the worst files just know that they go and i do recommend anyone having a natural birth to buy one of those donut pillow things because that really helped for my stitches and my piles which actually were more painful than my stitches so 
I love how open I'm being about this. I love that I'm just talking about piles <laughs> on YouTube. Um, and yes, so then I started pushing. Um, and that was painful, obviously. And I felt like the contractions kind of set, like slowed down and were like really big gaps in between when I was pushing, which was so annoying because you can't push when you ha haven't got a contraction. Like, it's just so hard. And literally, I was like pushing her and I got her there and then they, I would have no contraction and she'd slip back. And that happened a few times and I was literally like, I can't cope. And they were like, you're just gonna have to keep pushing in when you haven't got a contraction. And then because she was hedged up, they were like, we can see this of her. <laughs> so her little eyes were like out. <laughs> But the rest of her was in, how weird. They were like, just push. So I like pushed, got her out, blah, 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 blah. Um, so she was out and then um, the woman, literally, so they put her straight on me and then this midwife went to cut the umbilical cord. Oh, I forgot to say, I had an episiotomy too um, and they gave me local anaesthetic for that, thank goodness, to like numb the area because I can't imagine someone cutting me without pain relief. Um, so yeah, had that and then the woman went to cut the um, umbilical cord and I was like, can my husband do that please? And she was like, oh right, yeah. Um, she just was really like unpersonable, like just not a people person, which I feel like you should be for a midwife. Um, and then uh, it was like getting the placenta out and stuff. They gave me an injection to get the placenta out, I think. Um, and then loads of people came in and were like oh I just came to see the baby because she's so cute and I said to I told that story to someone after and Jack was like Sinead and they didn't like she hit the emergency button so something going wrong with the, plac um, with the placenta and getting the placenta out and that's why loads of people came in but they didn't want to worry you and I was like oh I was literally clueless I was just like oh yeah my baby is so cute everyone wants to see her um so yeah, then that happened, and then they did, um, I like held her, and she pooed all over me, um, and then they like cleaned me up, and cleaned her up, and like weighed her, and did all the things that they do, um, and then I held her again, and breastfed, and then they made me a cup of tea, and some toast, which was like the best, it was like the worst type of cup of tea, it was like the worst tea and toast I've ever had, but also the best tea and toast I've ever had, do you know what I mean? Like, it was basically just bread that hadn't been toasted, um, and the tea was like awful, but you know, and you're like, this is the best food and drink I've ever had in my life. And then we thought Jack would have to leave like immediately, but actually he didn't. Um, so we rang his mum to be like, can you come and get him basically? Because we got told like half an hour is how long you get with the baby and then he has to leave. Um, but they actually, so I had her at half one, I was so close to having to have four sets delivery guys and I'm oh my god I just can't even imagine that with no pain relief like big metal tongs no thank you um so yeah anyway I keep remembering things um he actually they didn't make him leave until seven o'clock in the morning because she just went to do paperwork and like I don't know if it's meant to take that long but she just left us in the room for like the whole time maybe it wasn't busy i don't know so weird um but it was really nice because jack got to stay with us um and then his mum was like in the car park though she's sleeping in her car felt so bad um so in the end at seven o'clock he left um and i was like just stay at home and like nap until like lunchtime or something because at least one of us will be like all right to look after the baby because i'm probably not going to sleep um so then i went on the ward i had been catheterized then they were like do you want to be catheterized or do you want a bedpan and i was like i want to be catheterized because i had stitches and i was just i don't want to deal with any of that um and then i literally slept for like 20 minutes um on the ward as i just couldn't sleep like obviously had a new baby like all of this had happened so then jack came at like lunchtime um, the baby was like checked out. I literally rang the buzz like a thousand times like, hey, can you show me how to put an appy on? Can you show me how to change her? Like, can you show me how to do this? Can you show me how to breastfeed? Like, I had no idea how to do anything. So they were really helpful and like they honestly didn't mind me asking all these questions. Um, and then they took the catheter out because they were like, you can't go home until you've done it. We, because I kept being like, what do I need to do to go home? Because um, I just was desperate to go home. It was so hot in hospitals too, especially apparently it's extra hot where babies are because they need to be like a certain temperature and they can't get cold especially poorly babies so um yeah it was like really warm um and i just couldn't see if i was like sweating 
then they decaf tried me and they were like don't go for a wee until you're really desperate and drink loads of water because then it will make it easier to go for the first wee and also with stitches and stuff and they made me wee into a bedpan over the toilet so that um they could like look at my wee as well to like i guess to check it and like do a wee test or whatever it didn't hurt at all that's one thing i was so worried about having stitches and the pain afterwards like literally couldn't feel them I felt it when they were stitching me up, but they also put more local anaesthetic in after that to help. Um, but yeah, I didn't feel that when I wee, went, went for a wee, it didn't hurt at all. It was just like the biggest relief after having a catheter in. Um, yeah, it's like the biggest relief going for a proper wee. And then when Jack was there, I had a shower because I've got showers there. I uh, didn't wash my hair or anything. I just couldn't be bothered. I just like had a body wash, uh, brushed my teeth, just like freshened myself up like... Got all, I literally had dried blood like all over my legs. My arm had blood all over it from where, I mean I still got a scar where she put the cannula in. I had like massive bruise on my arm. And then they just came and like did all checks on the baby. Um, and they checked how I was breastfeeding. They wanted to watch me like put her on the boob and feed her and like check that I was doing it right themselves. And then yeah, they were like that's okay. You can go basically. I think they wanted me, actually they didn't do that. Uh, they, I kept asking if I could go home and they like never came back and then in the end I was like Jack like can you just go and ask them if I can go home and he asked them and they really didn't want me to go home uh, but he was like she is going to be really upset if she can't go home so they were like okay and then they came and they were like if you want to go home you can go home basically so I went home um, and then the fun and games began so that was my birth story but I just thought I'd share a little bit about postpartum too because I feel like no one really makes you aware of it. I'm going to do a QA and a as well. So maybe I'll answer some questions about postpartum and stuff in that too. So if you've got any, then feel free to ask questions or any questions about the birth and stuff. Um, but yeah, so basically, I... It's really hard, like, so hard to breastfeed. Like, so painful. You don't know what they're getting. Like, you don't know if they're getting enough. All of this, um, which I think people just make it look so easy um and also there's loads of things that you don't know about like contractions after giving birth when your uterus shrinks and also i got really bad contractions when i whenever i went for a poo because i had you know how i said i she was like low down and back to back and i'd been pushing loads because of the way she was so i was pushing for like from like five o'clock at night maybe until one o'clock in the morning um and i like really traumatized my bowel basically so i was having like the same contractions like pushing pains like push uncontrollable pushing when i went for a poo for like ages um and i had to get like special pile cream and um, also like you're bleeding so much like you bleed so much after like i knew i knew you ble bled but i didn't know you bled that much like i, got, I was getting through a pack of maternity pads a day um and then and also because i had stitches obviously you're trying to keep the area clean so you don't want to have like anything on the pad like even there's a tiny bit of blood you going to change it because you don't want it to get infected um and then basically what else night sweats you have night sweats <laughs> but like i don't want to scare people but i just want to be honest um they stop around two weeks so everything after two weeks so i was just like kind of back to normal after a week my piles had massively shrunk i think after two weeks they'd pretty much gone and it was just like yeah i just felt so much better um on day three i was literally having like you get the worst anxiety as well apparently it's common when your milk comes in my milk came in my boobs were, like concrete they were so sore they were like oozing milk i like couldn't sleep on my front because of that i couldn't sleep on my back because of the piles i had the awful anxiety pretty much didn't sleep until like day four or five and when jack was just like look basically what happened i keep jumping ahead of myself and i have to go back basically what happened was we had to put her on formula because i got mastitis in my boob and then I also got a message saying I had a urine infection when they tested my wee. So I had to go on some really strong antibiotics, even though you can breastfeed on them. But I had to like sort out my mastitis and she lost 11% body weight um, and had jaundice. But the 11% body weight was because I had mastitis. So we had to put her on a strict feeding schedule for putting weight on and also for the jaundice to flush it out of her system. So I know other people who've had babies that are much bigger than Margot um, and didn't have body uh, weight loss who have had to have um, strict feeding, strict feeding regimes because of the 
um, jaundice. So that's just like for that. Um, so we had to give her formula every day and whatever breast milk I could get from pumping. Um, and after that, I was like, do you know why? I actually prefer pumping because I can see how much she's getting. And I like the formula because Jack can do it. And I never knew before that you could do a mixture of breast and formula. Um, so obviously like not in the same bottle, but you could do like a breast bottle, a formula bottle and like mix it up. So um, I feel like knowing that like, I wish I'd known that in advance because I could have it would have made it feel a bit easier and also I wish I'd been had more realistic expectations of breastfeeding it's so hard um so basically I then on like day five Jack was or four or five Jack was like I'm gonna sleep all night and formula feed her and you're gonna go to bed and have a night's sleep because you've not rested since you gave birth basically so he's literally an angel so he did that um, and then I think for a couple of nights too, we just like took it in turns, like three hour shifts of like sitting downstairs with her and the other one having a nap because we were just like not coping. We were both so tired. Um, and we were having to get up at like 8 a.m. every morning and get ready and take her to the hospital, which is, as I said, is not close to us um, because she um, had jaundice. So she wasn't red where she had to have light therapy, but she was um they were like she was on the edge though so we basically had to take her and she had to have a blood test every day she had to be weighed to make sure she was putting her weight on because she lost so much weight and then we had to sit for like three hours and wait to find out if um she had to stay in overnight and i'd stay with her or if she could go home and then we'd have to come back the next day to do the same tests and we had to do that for basically the whole first week which was so stressful because i was so poorly and we were just so tired and we we're trying to struggle to like get used to having a new baby and everyone's like are you enjoying the baby bubble and I'm like no we're in hospital the whole time so yeah that was like the story of like the whole birth including the aftermath <laughs> I feel like and also by the way I was like thinking that my stitches would be healed by like week three but we are in week six now and they still I don't think are healed no we're on week seven she's eight weeks in three days so they're still not healed properly I they were infected a couple of weeks ago at like four weeks no six weeks my stitches got infected so just thought I'd let you know because I feel like I expected them to just be healed for me to be up and ready and fine um but that's not the case um and I tried to keep them as clean as possible someone told me they were like washing after every time they went for a wee and everything and um they still got infected so I don't think it's a reflection on you being a clean person like I definitely could have been clean like I didn't I didn't wash it every time I went for a wee but no one had told me to and I know like thinking back it's like common sense but at the time I was just like so dazed and confused about everything like I just didn't even think to do that and then by like week three or whatever it felt like they'd kind of got better like I couldn't feel them or anything so um, I'd stopped having my daily baths and showers because I was so busy with the baby and if I was it was a choice between having a shower or having an earlier night then I chose having an earlier night um, which I mean I should have looked after myself better but that's just a choice that I made um, and also I was going on longer walks and stuff so then it got infected so I just think be careful if you have stitches don't overdo it basically um, but yeah so that's my birth story I hope that you guys enjoyed it and haven't scared you too much um, I'd love to hear like if you and have any similar stories um, I literally had no idea that a jet and epidural couldn't work I said to Jack like I would really need to think about pain relief before thinking about having another child if we were gonna have another one um, and when we were having the baby when I was in labor I was like we are not having another baby <laughs> and literally immediately after I was like that's the last one um, no after I had her the first two things I said so she had loads of hair and the first thing I said was the old wives tales aren't true because I didn't have any heartburn whatsoever and the second thing I said was did I poo because I was sure that I would have pooed that was one thing I was so worried about is pooing um, because I've heard that it's quite common when you give birth and I was pushing for like from 5 to 1.30 and I didn't poo I was so shocked like, honestly I really thought I'd poo <laughs> Um, so anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions whatsoever about postpartum, third trimester or birth, feel free to leave them in the, in the description box. I know it's like when you're pregnant and like you have so many questions and you don't want to bother people, but like I know what it's like. So like, feel free to ask away anything you have and I'll reply and I'll also do a Q&A and answer them in more detail in that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you next time. Bye.